Hello YouTube, welcome back. This is part 7 of creating the Sutton Who cooking chain. So in this episode we're going to create the 6 bar composite piece. Now we're not going to be creating the whole thing today, I have made the whole thing, uh, but it resulted in a 30 minute video. Uh, so I decided to split it into two parts to save you lot getting bored and wandering off to watch something more interesting. Like Colin Furs, he's far more exciting. So could be creating this out of raw iron as usual. Now I'm running low on raw iron, I've only got this crappy little pile here left over. Uh, it's not particularly brilliant quality but we will see how we get on with it. So I'm going to forge this down to 8mm square and we need three bars 24 inches long. So to get it down to 8mm I am using a piece of 8mm mild steel as a stop on the power hammer and that will give me the right section. So here are our three bars. So each of these bars I will mark off in the centre and then two and a half inches either side of that centre mark I will mark off a four and a quarter inch section. Uh, and that is where we will stick the twist. So get some heat in it. This is raw iron, so work it as hot as you dare. So to start off with, we are doing a rope twist. So you want to start off by rounding off the corners in between the centre dots, marking off that four and a quarter inch section. So literally, you want to just rotate the bar as you go along. The anvil will do one side and the hammer will do the other. So you really need to hammer on two corners. So give it a bit of a straighten after that. Uh, I do go into this in more depth in the previous video where I demonstrated rope twists. So once you've got the corners rounded off, you want to go in with a fuller, a narrow fuller or a blunt chisel, either way, whichever you prefer. Uh, and you just want to create a groove down the middle of each face on that four and a half inch section. So start by defining the line, then do some overlapping following grooves. Uh, and that will give you a nice smooth line down the middle. So then pop over to the vise. And the first four and a half inch section, you want to twist counterclockwise. Make sure you get it nice and even. Like so. Now, like I said, I did go into a bit more detail on rope twists in a previous video, so go back and have a peep at that if you're a bit flummoxed by all this. And then the second four and a half inch section, you want to twist clockwise. And that ensures that when we fold the bar over, uh, our twists will be heading in two different directions and you will get like a wheat sheaf effect, which is quite nice. So here's the bar twisted in two areas. So at this stage you want to go to that centre mark and you want to go in with a chisel, slightly sharper than your blunt chisel or fuller that you used previously. And you want to cut about halfway through the bar. And that will help it bend exactly where you want it to. So to bend it, cool it off both sides. And that will allow you to do this bit by hand which is a bit easier than faffing around with tongs. Now, this is crappy wrought iron, I was hoping it would bend. As you can see, it just split on me, which is not a problem. Uh, we will just tack weld it together and pretend like it never happened. So with it tacked together, now this only happened on this bar by the way, which would be the one that I film. Uh, with it tacked together, go in and do a full length weld uh, cool off the tip, uh, that will save it pre-overheating. And the end result is you'll have three elements with a double twist in each. Now these three elements, as you saw in the previous picture, uh, the tips don't line up because the twists are in the way. So you want to bend in the ends a bit and that will make sure that all three elements are contacting. So 
So spend some time, get it right. Like so. So next we will make a so next we will take a piece of flat bar and bend the end over and we're actually going to make a collar and that will help hold these three bars together these three elements together uh, you could use wire uh, Anglo-Saxon didn't, didn't actually have wire as such uh, I did mention this in a previous video um, and a gentleman commented uh, on how would they do it without wire uh, so this is a demonstration of how I believe they would have done it which is basically make a collar uh, now this collar isn't going to be part of this final assembly as you will see basically bend it into position and hammer it down ideally on this one I could have done with making the collar material a little bit shorter it would have made my life a bit easier uh, then with the collar safely in place tack the tip together make sure you get a nice sturdy tack on the end so that took a couple of heats to make sure that it was welded at the end now we're not going for a weld along the whole length just yet uh, because the collar's in the way so just make sure you've got a decent tack bend the bars up to where they want to be and then you can literally just knock the collar away and then just shove it away never need to see it again so at this stage get a full welding heat and weld it so some of you may remember my disastrous multi-bar CX. Now I think that if I'd used a collar on that uh, it would have come out a lot better and the world wouldn't have fallen apart in the way it did. Uh, if you haven't seen my humiliation in that video uh, please don't bother going to watch it even out of curiosity. Uh, so with that fully welded I heat up the rest of it and just go back and bend it together. Make sure the other side is fully contacted. And then go on and weld that up. So as you can see you don't need a collar for this one. It's sitting together perfectly happily because it's welded on the other end. So I did do a tack on the tip of this as well. Uh, didn't get this on camera. Also had camera problems because my camera died making this video. I had to borrow my lovely girlfriend's camera to finish filming it. And here is the rough billet. So there are some weld lines in there. I'm not bothered by them at all because they are fully welded. So what we're going to do at this stage is at a good heat to save getting any delamination, we're going to head over to the BIC and I'm using my shoe turning hammer with a radius um, with a domed head on it. We're just going to start drawing out these bits on the end. Not sure what you'd call them. Tabs maybe. A bit big for a tab. Uh, and you want to get these down to about an inch and a quarter. So as you can see the bit in combination with the rounding hammer makes short work of drawing this out. Uh, helps that it's wrought iron as well. It moves quite quickly. So just spend some time getting that nice and even. Uh, try and keep the thickness of the original bars. 8 millimeters. Um, and just get it nice and even and uh, then spend a little bit of time just getting them lined up with each other and nice and straight like so where's that last tap? that last all important tap So as you can see some of these weld lines have disappeared already. Uh, don't worry about the ones that are remaining, we will deal with them in the next episode. Uh, but before that uh, we're going to take the ugly bit at the end of these tabs and we're just going to cut it off. So go in with a sharp chisel over the face of the anvil and then use the cutting face which is 
exactly what that's for uh, to just amputate the ugly end off and then what we're going to do is we're just going to draw a nice flat even chisel taper so as you're forging down keep an eye out on how the thickness is spreading you want to keep that dressed in because you don't want to go over an inch and a quarter I think it was uh, and I'm using my broad faced hammer here uh, to get a nice smooth finish Look at that lovely taper. So you can see I have got a bit of delamination on there. I'm not too bothered about that. It's a bit annoying, but I can live with it. And then what you're going to do is you're going to get a decent heat on the end. And we're just going to start scrolling that over. It doesn't really matter which way you scroll it. Uh, it can work, work both ways at the moment. But you do want to make sure that you scroll this in the same direction on both tabs. So we're going to go for a closed scroll, uh, which is pretty much like a snub end scroll, but hollow, as I believe that is what is represented in the drawings. Like so. Sorry about the camera wobble tripod's on its way out. So here is the fruit of today's labours. So we will finish this off in the next episode. Like I say, like I said at the beginning, I did film the whole thing, uh, but it resulted in a half hour video, so I figured I would cut it down to two ten minute videos as best I could. So thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe or ask any questions you might have. Uh, if you do enjoy these videos, uh, you might consider donating on Patreon, every penny helps. Uh, here's my current list of Patreon donors, thanks a lot guys, and I will see you all on the next one.